What will be the amount of water accumulated in an hour? One hard way would be to count the number of drops and calculate. Is there a better way? Let's say we analyze this situation and get that the rate of drops falling per minute is constant. It is 100 drops per minute. Then we can easily find the answer. In an hour, 6000 drops will be accumulated. But what if the rate is not constant or if the water is flowing continuously? Let's consider another situation. We want to find the number of vehicles travelling on this road in a day. On a busy highway, we can think of the stream of vehicles as a continuous quantity like water. So we see that the problem could arise when we have to add a continuous quantity or even a discrete one. Addition of numbers is one of the most basic things that we learn in our childhood. We get more efficient and faster at it once we learn how to multiply numbers. But when addition becomes continuous, we have to upgrade this skill. In this video and a few upcoming ones, we will take our skill of addition to the next level. The upgrade is called the process of integration. Do you remember that in one of our previous videos, we saw that integration is used to find the area or the volume of different shapes? So, how can it be used to solve this problem? Actually, these two things are connected to each other. There is a relation between geometry and addition. For example, we can easily count the number of points currently on the screen. But what if I ask you to count now? You could say that this question is absurd. We cannot count the number of points of a line as it's continuous. For any two points on it, we can always find a point between them. So instead of total number of dots, we define the length of a line. This was just a glimpse of the idea. Let's see what exactly do we mean by this. I want you to imagine a situation. Recently, you are hooked to a video game. As you keep winning, you are rewarded with points and you just want to keep collecting them. You wonder how many points you would collect after three weeks. Luckily, the game has a feature that shows the rate at which you are earning the points. It shows that after T weeks, your rate is T squared 1000 points per week. So, assuming that you keep earning points at this rate, how many points will you have after 3 weeks? You could probably say it's easy. From this relation, we can find the rate for each week. In week 1, the rate will be 1000 points per week. In week 2, 4000 points per week. And in week 3, it will be 9000. So according to these rates, in the first week, the points earned will be 1000, in the second week, 4000, and in the third week, 9000. So 14000 points in total. But is this correct? Actually not. In these calculations, we directly assumed that the rate is constant during each week. But it's not constant. This function implies that the rate is continuously growing. Its graph looks like this. So how do we find the total number of points? For this, we need to understand what does this calculation tell us graphically. Let's continue this in the next part. Look at this graph. Here, we have the number of weeks on the x-axis and the rate of earning points on the y-axis. This calculation implies that the rate is constant during each week. So it can be represented by the horizontal lines like this. Now notice one interesting thing. Look at these rectangles. The area of the first rectangle will be equal to the total number of points earned in the first week. How? The height of this rectangle is equal to the rate of 1000 points per week and its width is equal to 1 week. So its area will be equal to 1 multiplied by 1000 which equals 1000 points. So we see that the area below these horizontal lines tells us the total number of points earned during that duration. 
Can you find the areas of the other two rectangles? For the second rectangle, it will be equal to 4000 points. And for the third, it will be 9000 points. So we get the sum of the areas of these three rectangles to be equal to 14,000 points. This is the answer we got using this calculation. So we see that the process of addition here simply becomes finding the total area covered by these rectangles. But now we know that the rate is not constant during each week. Notice in the graph that in each week, the actual rate is lower than the rate we considered here. Consider the first half of week 1. Here, the rate will not be equal to 1000 points per week. At the end of the first half of week 1, the rate will be one fourth of a thousand, that is 250 points per week. So let's consider this as the constant rate throughout the first half of week 1 instead of 1000. This will give us a better estimate of total number of points. Can you tell me the total points earned in this duration? Yes, it will be equal to the area of this rectangle. 125 points. If we do this for each half of all the three weeks, we will get this graph. Now we know that the total points earned will be equal to the sum of the areas of these rectangles. After doing these calculations and adding, we will get the answer as 11,375 points. Earlier, we got the total as 14,000 points and now it's this number. This is a better estimate than the previous one because the rate considered here is closer to the graph. So what should we do next to improve our estimate further? Correct. If we consider an even shorter duration of a week, for example a day, we will get an even better estimate. As we keep decreasing the width of the rectangles further, we see that this total area will approach the area under this curve. So we see that the problem of finding the total number of reward points becomes the problem of finding the area under the graph of this function. This is the connection between geometry and addition we mentioned earlier. In abstract terms, we can say that if we have a function which represents the rate of some quantity, then the area under the graph of that function tells us the total amount of that quantity. Now we need to know how to find the area under the graph of a function. Integration is the process used to find this area. And this area is called the integral of the function. In the next video, we will see how to find the integral of a function. Do subscribe to our channel to stay updated.